In this video, I'm going to show you how to create sightly extensions for your Google Ads. I'll also show you a bunch of examples and share some best practices when it comes to creating Google Ads site link extensions. They only take a few seconds to set up, but can make a massive difference to the success of your campaigns. So I've just searched for digital marketing agency to show you some examples here. And we can see the ads that have popped up uh, have all got site link extensions. And they're these sort of blue parts beneath the main body of the ad. And they're relatively straightforward. You can see they're in link format. If someone was to search for this and click on one of those site links as opposed to the main headline of the ad, they would be taken directly through to that page on this business's website. So why are site link extensions so important? Well, firstly, they help you take up more space on the page. And we know that the larger your ad, the higher your click-through rate, the better your results are likely to be. They're relatively small here on a computer. On a mobile, they're quite a bit larger. I'll be showing you examples of that um, in a minute. They also help your prospects navigate to exactly where they want to go, which can help conversion rates. So instead of having to click through on the headline and navigate through your website, they can just go directly to the place they want to do, they want to go to. That's gonna help with drop-off rates when they're navigating through your website and things like that. Also, because they're in link format, you you can see they stand out a lot more. Here they're blue, um, it helps just make the ad more visually engaging. Again, that's gonna help with click-through rates, and once again, that's gonna help you get better results. And of course, they are completely free to add. There's no additional charge or anything like that that comes with adding in site link extensions, so they're well worth including. So let's go through how you actually create your Google Ads site link extension. So I'm in an example Google Ad account here, and on the left-hand side, you want to come to Ads and Extensions, and then click on Extensions. Then you want to go and click on this little plus button and select Site Link Extension, which is the one at the top. And that will bring up this window where we can actually create our site link extensions. Now, the first thing that you need to decide is where you're going to add these site link extensions to. Are you gonna add them at the account level, campaign level, or ad group level? In other words, are the site link extensions you create now going to operate across all your campaigns, um, which would be account level, across just one campaign, but all the ad groups in that campaign level, or in the specific ad groups? I'd recommend going with the specific ad groups, and I'll explain why in a minute. So let's run through some examples, and then I'll get into best practices and things like that. So we're gonna start with a really simple one, which is just contact us. That's obviously something that some people that see your ads are going to be interested in navigating directly to, particularly if you're service-based or something like that, or people might have questions about your products. Um, so then we want to add in a description. We could go with something like this. You can get in touch with us by, by phone, um, email, or live chat. I'm obviously gonna to have to break that down onto the second line to make that work. And that's absolutely fine to have a sentence that goes across the two. Um, and just remember, whenever you're creating anything Google Ads related that your prospects are going to see, it's worth selling that action. So the idea that you can get in contact with us really easily because we have a number of different options, including live chat, might be the sort of thing that gets a click on your ad as opposed to your competitors because people think, oh, they've got great customer service, I can contact them really easily, I'll, I'll inquire with them, I'll find out about them, I'll click on their ad. And then you're going to need to add in the final URL, which is obviously going to be, in this case, directly to your contact page, okay? Um, so that's an example of a site link that you can add in, fairly straightforward one. Next, we'll go with something a little bit different. Assuming you have a lead magnet, something you give away for free in exchange for people joining your email list or something like that, you can add that in as a site link and it can be a great way to generate more clicks. So we could have something like free ad template. You know, we have lead magnets like that on our website and that could be someone's looking for digital marketing services, they see that pop up, it might help encourage them to click and grab that um, first before they go ahead and inquire. These sorts of things could be done. So we could do something like copy and paste um, proven ads from our free template. And you can see that in these description lines, you've actually got quite a bit more um, real estate, more characters to, to work with than you do with the simple um, site link text. And just a quick note on these descriptions, unlike with the site link text themselves or other parts of Google Ads where I like to use capitalization on the, the first letter of each word, it's absolutely fine to leave these more in sentence form. That's not a problem. And then of course we would pop in, uh, you know, our, this isn't the right URL by the way, so don't go in and, uh, and check it out, but we'd pop in um, a final URL in there as well. Another type of site link you could use is one that highlights and takes people directly to your work. So you could have something like our portfolio and then use a description that's something like, take a look at the exceptional projects we have completed. And if I grab that, pop that on the second line, we could have something like that, right? And you can see how for certain businesses, that's gonna be really important. Your prospects are absolutely gonna want to check out what you've done previously to see if that's the sort of thing that they're looking for. And along those lines, you could change out this site link text to different options. So instead of our portfolio, you could have something like testimonials. Um, you could have something like 
success stories, um, if I could spell it correctly, you could even have case studies. You know, again, it's going to depend on your business, what's important, what, what your prospects need to see before they're ready to hire you for your services, purchase your products, etc. Just think about that when you're coming up with the site link text and obviously where you're actually going to send people on your website. You can also use call to action related site links. So you could have something like buy leather shoes. It's got an action word in there, help encourage people to take that action. You could have shop green bags, for example, whatever it is that you have to have to sell, but including words like buy, shop, action words can make a difference, definitely worth testing. And then of course we can use site links to send people directly to sales and promotional pages and offers on our website. So you could have, if I add site link, add another one, you could have something like Christmas sale or, you know, 25% um, off or buy one, get one free or, you know, whatever it is that you happen to be offering, you can include those and send people directly there. Again, these are site links that get high click-through rates. Now I quickly mentioned before that um, site links take up a lot more space on mobile, you can see this is a mobile preview right here, and these site links, it's just added in the top four, and these site links, you can see how much more space that would take up on the page, how much more likely you would be to get that click if you include them versus not. So there's a whole bunch of examples there and hopefully that's got you thinking about what you could include and what would be relevant out of those options for your business. But I wanna really run through some best practices as well. So ideally you're going to create six, maybe even eight different site link extension options here. That's going to allow Google to choose the best ones based on performance. It's something that Google tracks and that we can see in the data and that's helpful for overall performance. So if you can take a bit more time and make sure you add in a whole bunch of options, assuming of course you have enough pages on your website for that particular ad group and things like that, it's well worth doing. Next thing is that I'd always recommend you do add in a description and use up, um, use both lines. It's rarely going to be displayed, but when it does, makes your ad bigger, increases your CTR, um, which is helpful. I haven't done it in the lower examples and you know, in the interest of getting through this video, but always worth taking the time to make sure you get that description written and added in. And remember, this is an opportunity to sell that click, okay? So really think about these and put some language in that, that's going to help you do that. So here we've got, take a look at the exceptional projects we've completed. Not just take a look at our work, it's a bit more than that. Copy and paste proven ads from our free um, ad template. So copy and paste, that sounds nice and easy. They're proven, great, that's a selling point up here. Get in touch with us via, we've talked about all the different ways that someone could do this. So really try and sell that click with this with the description and make sure you added it. As with most things Google Ads related, um, the more specific you can be, the better. And that's why we're adding site links at the ad group level, ideally, because that's gonna allow you to create more specific site links. Again, assuming you have the page on your website that are to do with that particular offer or that particular product or however it is that you're categorizing your ad groups. It could be that keyword grouping that you can use. Not everyone's gonna be able to do this, but more specificity is better. That's why ideally we're gonna add at the ad group level if that's appropriate for your business and your website has enough pages to warrant it. Um, it just helps with matching what people are looking for with exactly what you can provide. If you've got tons of different options and you're thinking, what do I actually include as a site link extension? Take a look at your Google Analytics data and see where people navigate to the most and where they spend the most time. You want to include site links to your most popular things, you, the things you know the people that are interested in your products or services are most wanting to see before they're ready to take an action. We obviously know that once people click on our Google ads, what they then do after that in terms of um, how long they stay, the page they go to, that's super, super important. You can find out a lot of that data using Google Analytics. That could be really helpful in deciding what to include. It's also best not to include the same stuff in your site link extensions, particularly in the descriptions, as you do in the rest of your ads, whether that's through other extensions or in the, the ads themselves. Um, you don't want to repeat yourself when these site extensions are displayed. That would just be a waste. You want to provide more information to help sell the click. And if you know that a lot of your search volume is going to come from mobile, shorter site link text, basically the site link headline, as it were, um, is better. So obviously Google allows us to use up to 25 characters, but if you can keep it to around the 15 mark, sometimes you're gonna have to go over that and that's absolutely fine. Don't feel like that's you know an absolute line in the sand, but if you can keep to around the 15 mark, that could be helpful, particularly for mobile. So once you've got your site link extensions created, you can scroll down, click save, they'll go through a review process and they'll start to display. Now site link extensions aren't always displayed. Google basically says it's up to them where they do and don't display site extensions. You'll 
often see that not all the Google ads on a page will have site extensions, particularly on mobile, often only the top one will. So if you're searching for your ads or other people searching for your ads and you're thinking, I can't see these site link extensions, don't think you've done anything wrong. Um, it's just that they often don't display and the descriptions are displayed even less often than just the site link text. Something you need to be aware of. Once your site link extensions are up and running, Google will also provide you with performance data. So I've jumped into another ad account, a client's ad account, and here we can see that these four site link extensions um, in this campaign here, we can see how they've performed over time. So you can see that these top ones have more impressions, slightly more conversions, more clicks, etc. And you can use this data to assess the performance of your Google Ad site link extensions and then improve things. So you can see that some don't perform as well, you can turn those off. If you can see that a certain type of site link extension performs well and helps the overall performance of the campaign, okay, well let's create new ones to test against that. If for example, a lead magnet style site link extension works really well, can you create and put other lead magnets into your um, Google Ads? If a call to action style site link extension works really well, you know, the buy leather shoes, that sort of thing, an action word in there, great. Let's go ahead and populate our Google site link extensions with more options like that. So using this data is well worth doing and you get here very simply by once again, clicking on ads and extensions, clicking on extensions, and then just selecting site link um, at the top and you'll be brought through to something that looks very similar to this. Using the right copy in your site link extensions is important, but knowing what to include in your Google ads headlines is absolutely key. In this video, I show you exactly how to write exceptional Google ads headlines. I share a bunch of examples and techniques that you can use. I'd strongly recommend you go ahead and check it out.